Hello, and thank you for watching this video. Here at Discovered Byte, we concentrate on improving Java-based applications by identifying the factors that negatively impact their performance. During the next few minutes, I'm going to demonstrate our approach and show you several reports that pinpoint the exact location of the application code inefficiencies and architectural flaws. So, let's begin. I'm about to launch the application that was created to demonstrate our approach to identifying the causes of performance-related problems in Java applications. After logging into the application, you are seeing the main screen of an HR mockup that allows the managers of Acme to reward the performance of its employees. Though the interface of the application is imaginary, the issue you're about to see is very real. It was first found while helping one of our customers and later recreated for the purpose of this demo. This is the HR action list, where you see the list of items either reviewed or approved by the managers of Acme. Drilling into the content of the first record will provide you with almost immediate output, which is something expected by the users. I'm going to enter the value for billable goal attainment nominal salary increase, and performance evaluation. As the last step, I need to press the Complete Review button. The action has been completed, and we expect the system to update the list with a line that represents a new action, which is the case here. Now, let's look at the details of this new action. By now, you can probably relate to the frustration of real application users who are complaining about substantial delays while reviewing the results of their work. In the case of our customers, the delay was proportional to the number of application users in different departments, ranging from 20 seconds to a few minutes. That's pretty much what we experience now. The screen is finally up, and you can see that it doesn't have any components that would slow down its rendering. You've just seen the issue from an application user's perspective, and now let's see how the issue is troubleshot. That's where our technology comes in handy. By installing a data collection part of our discovery suite onto the application server, we get a detailed view into what's going on while a troublesome scenario is being executed. The installation and configuration of our tool is performed by adding JAR to the Java options on the application server. And now I'm going to turn the data collection on in one of our configuration files. Nothing else is installed on the server. If you open the console, you'll see that after the logging has been enabled, additional information pops up on the screen. The only thing left to do is to rerun the application with the data collection on. We will skip the waiting for the action screen to open. After the form is finally displayed, I go back to the configuration file of the data collector and turn the logging off. This way, we collect only the information relevant to the specific execution. During the data collection stage, the data is written to the files, which will then be used for analysis. Now we can mine collected data by fetching it to the analyzer tool. This data analysis would be performed offline by one of our engineers. Decoupling of the collection and the analysis was done intentionally. One of the main reasons was to remove the need of our participation in the data collection phase of the process and to reduce the overall cost of the analysis. To save time, I'm going to skip the process of us preparing the data for the analysis. If you are interested in receiving more information about this part, please contact us directly. For the purpose of this presentation, our tool ran for only a few minutes. However, in real life, whenever the performance of the whole application is in question, it could be kept running for an extended period of time. Please note that the impact on the server's performance and output footprints are negligible. We are going straight to the reports that were generated as the outcome of the analysis phase. First is the summary report of the threads that flags two of them running for an extended period of time. Parallel with thread execution, we collect memory use information 
that could aid with identifying memory leaks and other related problems. The next report shows the CPU utilization by the thread for the duration of the execution. To concentrate on the important information, we filtered out all the threads that have zero CPU utilization. In this case, the only important thread is the highlighted one. That's where the activity was carried out. Other displayed threads have non-zero CPU utilization as well, but they were running for a much shorter period of time, so they were not the cause of the delay. Let's drill into the details of this thread. The displayed report shows the method execution within the thread we decided to look into. Aside from seeing the full duration of the execution, we see the net execution. This piece of information is important because the full duration would show the time spent by looking at the function and all the other functions called by it, while the net duration provides information about the time used by that very function. Along with time, we can see the number of executions that might point to the cause of the issue. In our case, we can see that calculation salary increase was performed four times, which is abnormal. And what's worse, the ACME FlowX function within the calculating salary increase was called more than 3,000 times. Another area that requires attention is the message channel function. Though it runs quicker, the fact that it's called 9,171 times is also abnormal. Note that in real life, most of the code was part of middleware and could not be analyzed line by line. Functions similar to calculate salary increase were custom coded and could be analyzed for logic architecture or coding flaws. The conclusion regarding the issue being demonstrated is that records are being read individually over the network and calculated on the client side. Much better performance could be achieved by running the query and bringing the results over to the network once. For troubleshooting of more complicated issues, we could drill down even further. The displayed report shows all the calls made during the execution. As you can see, this report confirms repeated calls to the functions we flagged previously. This concludes the demonstration and confirms that our tool could pinpoint the issues in custom and vendor code. For more information, please visit us directly at discoveredbyte.com.